Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to revisit Cornwall. I'm going to get a Kynance coat but this time only in a couple of colours. So let's roll the intro. Let's see what happens. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I am revisiting Cornwall for this video. I went to a lovely place called Kynance Cove last year, did a lot of paintings at the time, and I also did a lot of paintings, or have done a lot of paintings since. But I wanted to revisit this one just in a couple of three colours, like I've been doing recently in these semi-abstracts for you. So without further ado, let's get on, let's see what happens. Hi guys and welcome back to this painting. It's another semi-abstract or at least I'm exploring a landscape in a very loose form in just two colours. And those colours are going to be Payne's Grey and the transparent or translucent pyrrole orange from Daniel Smith. You'll also see a little bit of cobalt blue sneak in there during the part of the sky. But there was so little of it that it really didn't make a great deal of difference. Now, the drawing itself is pretty much three shapes and, and a wave. It is the distant headland of rock, which has got to have that aerial perspective when I come to do the painting part. Then there is that large rock mass in the middle ground and almost just a triangle to the left hand side, which is the rock that's nearest to us. And that's what I'm putting in right now. I'm using a mechanical pencil on 2B lead. It's two millimeters. It gives me a lot of uh, flexibility and I can also lay that pencil right down. You'll see that I actually have quite a bit of lead sticking out. I like to sometimes roll that lead and hold the pencil in a very different way than the way I am now. But I don't or rarely hold it as if I were writing a letter to somebody. I, I find that can be very very stilted and very exacting. Now for the colour and I'm going to go in with the sky. Now my I need to make enough colour up. I need to have sufficient colours to go in. And it's a little bit like weak tea. As it dries, it's not going to make a huge impact on depth of colour. And I'm just scribbling it on. I'm having a play. I really am having fun. I have no idea how this painting is going to turn out. Okay, so the paper I'm using for this is Arsh and it's 300 pounds and it is rough paper. I love the rough surface for those skippy brush marks that you can put in, not only in the sky as I just did, but also further in when it comes down to the water level and that lovely glistening highlights of the, on the top of the sea. Now I'm putting in some lovely Payne's Grey and looking at the first of these rocks, but I'm not actually defining one shape over another. This is preliminary. This is the first layer going in. So the whole of the area is pretty much getting treatment the same. Both rocks are being painted together and any differences will be uh, shown later. And I'm coming through now. I'm making them lighter as they come down towards the sea. There's a lot of spray from the heavy swell and the crashing waves on the rocks. And I wanted to depict that. So the darker values of the rocks or the headland or the, the ground, as it were, the cliffs, is going to be at the top. As it comes down the page towards where they hit the water, some of it may well have a few darker marks in them but they're predominantly going to be a lot of lighter marks with a few dark crevices painted in. You saw me coming in with the sky again, but I went straight through the rock because I wanted some of that warmth to come into that rock and allow it to come all the way down to the horizon level. And I've even left a little bit of white paper where the dry brush has just skipped over the top of those mountains, leaving the cool white in the valleys to show through the paint later on. The sea itself, I'm leaving a little bit of glisten, especially around where the uh, landforms are. But the sea itself, I'm leaving quite pale. I'm using a lot of oranges and pale blues in there, but the paint mixture is not that strong. There's quite a bit of water going in. I don't want to overdo any of it. So that's really where that is. I'm putting a slightly darker value in, which will be 
I suppose the base of the, the wave that's coming in at that point and I just wanted to set that up so I didn't forget it and I knew roughly where it was. I left a bit of light at the bottom of it and then I've got the repeat of that where you've got a slight reflection in the water as the wave is crashing and moving toward you. So all of this now I'm putting in little bits of information it looks quite dark and indeed it is quite dark on the paper but it does dry very very pale every color i'm putting on here is as i say it's just preliminary and it will dry a lot lighter i added just some pure water into the mix then just to flush out some of the pigment on those areas now these are the negative areas of the salt or foam patterns that you get on shallow water as it's pushing in over the sand. So the white bits are suggestive of foam and the darker bits are those areas between the foam. And I'm just scratching around with the tip of the brush very, very carefully, very, very gently, bring that all the way down to the taped border at the bottom of the painting. Now I'm just sort of changing from blues to warms and all that sort of thing just i'm pretty much working just the two colors as i said and i know a little bit of blue did creep in but uh it predominantly is Payne's gray and the pyral orange and i am just using the two colors to give me all the depth and all the warms and the cool values to suggest the rocks and the immediacy of the wave and that in the foreground so what i'm now looking at doing is adding some richer darks and by that i mean adding some blue and some orange together to give me a, a sort of a darkish dark i can i can move that to warm and i can move that to cool by adding one or more of the other component but it gives me the weight in that cloud i've added it while the painting is still damp of course the whole of this painting is damp even the sky has still got some dampness in it certainly the rocks on the side have got a lot of damp in it you can still see the paint in the background moving and i'm just adding these i'm looking at the paper if it's too wet i'm not going to add anything into it if i don't want it to move if i want it to move a little bit and I can put in a bit of paint where it's not dry, but almost dry. It's the checking up and seeing how damp or how dry your paper surface is. To It will determine how far the spread of color you next put on will go. And that's what I'm doing. So this is a wet in wet painting, the whole of it. But I am choosing my moments carefully to add colors here or there as to where I want them. In other words, I'm working on this area in the foreground. Again, this darker area at the base of the wave. You can see I've already formed a little bit of white water that comes over the top. I wish I'd actually had the foresight to have let that um, sort of stay a little whiter, but I didn't. But it's still enough to suggest the top of the wave. Now I come in with some more blues and I'm working this center section of rock, adding a bit more detail through and over the top of some of those other colors but allowing some of those colors to pop through changing the temperature now as the rock comes down to meet the sea and changing it to a warmer color so we've got that lovely transition of blue through to the warm but again it's light enough when that dries up it stands out right now but as it dries up it will pale off and I can add some even darker marks to that and create more of a suggestion of the rock, especially as it touches all the water. You know, get those little dark fissures in the masses. Doing the same on this one that's nearest to us. But again, I put a little bit warmer color right next to that cooler color. So it does suggest that the rocks are different. Already, I'm putting in some stronger color. Now, this color is probably creamier than tea and it will stand up to being less stronger it won't dry as pale it won't run as far either it's a stronger pigment but i'm still allowing some of the paint that was put on before underneath to radiate through the marks that i've created so it's not literally painting over one color for the other i'm painting the positive or i suppose the negative i don't know but i'm painting different values over those and allowing the light parts to poke through. I'm doing the same, but I've popped back to the Payne's Gray now. I'm doing the same with the rock in the middle. Creating its shape, I'm looking at the shape more. The paint 
behind, i.e. the sky, hasn't dried totally, but it is almost totally dry. And it allows me to put a very hard edge, uh, as you would expect for such great big monstrosities of landform in the distance. And that's what excites me about this. We have got just two colours, but you can read this painting from front to back and it just works. You've got that beautiful mass of rock well all of it really but you can see how it stands out against that lovely sky the sky was allowed to dry off a little bit and you've got the beautiful light in the sky behind the rocks almost like the sun is in that area and towards the right so you get a bit more heavier cloud but that's the idea but i'm coming in i'm shaping the rock i'm putting some stronger pigments in now and they are creamier there's a lot more paint to water and even in here where it's still quite wet and if you if you could see it you could see the uh, surface glistening so there is quite a bit of water there in the fibers but I've added some strength in there and I've made a difference between the rocks at the back and the rock in the foreground so they really do start to stand out and here I'm sort of looking at the shape of the edge of the rock making it a bit more jagged or as it should be as per the photograph now, I will say it's not exactly as the photograph is, but it's enough. It's a suggestion. It does look the part. And I hope that you will agree with me that it does look uh, every bit the sort of uh, rock forms in Cornwall and Kynance, especially if you know the area. What I'm doing now is I'm going to look at the distant headland. Now, this uh, is way off quite a way off i did actually walk around that i think i'm not too sure but it's got a lovely shape to it it comes crashing down towards the sea and then there are a few extra rocks that you can see sticking out of the water and break up that lovely distant um, horizon line but what i've also done is trying to be a bit careful and leave some of that white paper that glistens through uh, to show the light hitting the surface of the water Picking my way across now with those extra little bit of rocks that jut out into the sea to go right to the far side of this painting. I'm going to use some damp water now and just soften up some of that area underneath the rocks. So you get a bit of a transition and not a hard edge as those rocks descend into the water as such. Just a little bit hit and miss. You're not quite sure where the rock starts, the sea ends. And I'm lifting some of the pigment out again to suggest that foamy sea spray you know it's like a mist it sort of occupies the area low down towards the uh, waterline and by lifting this area out here it suggests the fields the green grasses that are on top of that uh, headland in the distance it's just a transition between that color and the darker color underneath but it does work and it does look like you've got light hitting fields on top of that and that was the idea. And now I'm almost sort of at the point where I'm done. I'm going to concentrate on the wave in a moment. But certainly where this sort of headland is, it's pretty much sorted. There isn't, I think, any more really to do to the rocks. I think they are now setting themselves up, drying off. And I can just feel that enormity of that lovely sea crashing in, constantly crashing in against those waves. Uh, against those rocks and creating the spray and that I think is what drew me to this area is just the enormity of the headland the shape and the size of these uh, bits of land masses descending into the water there's a little bit of a rock now that's behind the wave it's a bit of an awkward uh, position really uh, the wave was high enough and the rocks were there I needed to put them in because they are part of the scene and I felt that it would be a little bit odd if someone looked at it and they weren't there. They would know they should be there. So I put them in and hopefully they do not detract from the wave itself. I did try and make them minimal if I could, but it wasn't that easy to do. But I think the rest of it's pretty much done. And I think we've just got to do the wave itself now. So a bit more dark coming in and maybe a pick a little bit more orange into that and mix the two together and create a very thick paint now it's not creamy but it's like uh very well it's a bit more than uh milky substance really in terms of consistency i needed it to stand up i needed it to be dark and strong and rich 
and it needed the strength there. But I'm adding some water into the lower parts and flushing some of that out. So as it goes away to the edges or down to the bottom, just using a little bit of dampness, a bit of clean water to flush the paint out. But I'm coming in with some dark areas now. I've gone over the warm. I'm coming in with a little bit of the blue, a little bit stronger to create that heavier shadow underneath the wave. Now, when I put that dark on at this point, you remember I said earlier in the painting that I wish I'd left white paper for that area of the wave where it's turning over and crashing over? And it didn't look that bright. But now I've put this dark in underneath. Look how bright that area on top of the wave has suddenly become. It's what I was saying to you before, that when you want something to appear darker, make everything around it lighter. And conversely, if you want something to appear lighter, make sure that what you put around it is quite a bit darker. And it will have the visual experience or the visual effect upon the eyes to creating something much, much lighter than it ordinarily was. If I put white paper to that, you would see a vast difference immediately. But I haven't and I don't need to. I've got enough light in there now to create the sense of my wave rolling over on itself as it comes towards the shore. Soft edges now, a little bit of uh, clear water, dampness in the brush, not too much water because you'll end up with all sorts of problems. But I'm just sort of dragging some of that paint out here and there to create the sense of lost edges, soft edges. I don't want anything hard. If I put hard edges right to the edge, then people's eye will be attracted to them. The center of attention is the center of the wave leading up through the rocks and to that great big rock in the top left hand side of the painting. The big rock in the foreground is not the part of the painting that you're looking at. That is merely there supporting the other rocks. But the one of interest is that one in the middle ground uh, to the left hand side. And you go up through the crashing wave to that. And that's the composition. And that's the um, area of interest, the sort of the area, of the golden mean, I think it's called, you know, the area where you are attracted to. And so and it's also the area that should be and has in this case got the most contrast in it. You know, you've got that big jump between the top of the rock and that sky and your eye goes straight up to that. And that's the idea. And that's all part of the composition. OK, now, when I started this painting, I really had the idea of making it into a loose abstract or a very loose semi abstract. Well, I got the loose bit right, I've got to say, but the rest of it, I didn't. It has both feet firmly sat in realism and reality. That's not a big problem because I set out, I had an idea, the idea evolved, the painting changed as I went along. But it is extremely loose. I love the harmonious flow of some of the colors, the warms of the cools. It reads correctly front to back. So it just goes to show you, you never quite know where your painting is going to end up. It doesn't matter how much planning you make sometimes, it just does its own thing. And I'm not unhappy with this one. And I'm suggesting that maybe you pop on over to the Patreon and download the reference for free and have a go at this one. Enjoy the processes, refer to mine, see what I did and do your own version and enjoy that. And also put it up on our uh, page, my new page, Painting with Paul Apps. Pop along there, ask to join you, be accepted and just showcase the, your versions to my videos on there. I love to see it and I look forward to seeing a few of them in the future. Now what seascape wouldn't be complete with some seagulls. So I'm going to leave it there, just add a few in and I catch each and every one of you in the next video very, very soon. So take care, stay safe wherever you are. All the best. Bye bye. Hi everybody. Well, I had so much fun doing that little picture of Kynance Cove. It was meant to be two colours and I'm sure you noticed a little bit of cobalt blue creeping in there. But it really wasn't much, not enough to make a, a real big difference to the whole thing. So essentially it was Payne's Grey and Pyrrhal Orange. Now, it was also predominantly wet in wet. And although areas were starting to dry to allow me to put more on, they were still quite damp. So there was a little bit of spread here and there. And it was fascinating as an experience just to see 
by layering paint in in different degrees of dampness to the paper to see what happened and that's where the fun came in and that's where I really enjoyed this and I enjoy every one of these types of paintings that I do because you never quite know what you're going to get so that's the fun of it as I say and it's for you to have a go at I'll put the reference over on my Patreon for you to download and use as in the as your version and don't forget to put your version up over onto our new facebook page which is painting with paul app so love to see you there love to see the results to this and any other of my videos you put up to but don't forget when you're over on the patreon checking it out to download the reference to this please consider thinking about looking at the tears and you may want to get involved and i'd love to welcome you on board and have you as one of my latest patrons we are growing and the patreon itself is growing all the time with content there's tons over there for you to enjoy and learn from as well fully narrated and all the reference photos for them as well so i'd love to see you there if you've got this far in the video and i'm sure you've enjoyed it so far then give it the thumbs up thank you very much for that Please also, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you a thing to do that, but it really does help my channel grow and it will push it to, out to so many more people. And when you do that, click the bell icon, click the notifications, and it will tell you every time I upload a new video. So with that all said and done, I do hope that you have a go at this one. As I say, it is all about having fun and all the experimentation. That's the enjoyment of watercolour. So, without further ado, I'm going to wish each and every one of you well. Stay safe. Happy painting. Catch you all next week in next week's video. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Painting Channel. Today, I'm going to be... Re <laughs> Start again already first one hi everybody and welcome no 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 hi everybody welcome back now i loved it when i was down there earlier last year earlier last year late last year but i'm not going to carp on but carp on carp harp on harp on carry on keep talking about start again then Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Now, no, I've done that bit. And I loved exploring. Now, a little bit of cobalt blue crept in there. I don't know if you noticed. Well, of course you noticed because I told you. So, yeah.